This is the July plan with me and our flower this month is Jasmine. Join me for a graphic black and white cover page, a classic weekly layout and lots more. Welcome back my friends. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. This month I needed a fresh notebook. My other one was full so I ordered myself a little something from Archer and Olive. These are absolutely my favorite journals and if you want to support this channel in a small way and you need a notebook you can use my link to order one for yourself. So starting in a fresh notebook I will just say I'm a little bit backwards this month. I forgot to order myself a notebook, so I had to push filming. And then of course, the day I scheduled to film, which was already tight, Sally was up all night with a fever the night before. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, but I think it's a good thing because sometimes we need our journal to work for us. We need it to be quick, but we still want it pretty. So that's what we're all about this month. Let's get started. Our whole spread starts with the letter J. J for July, J for Jasmine, you get it. <laughs> I printed mine on the computer, that way it's really uh, perfect and symmetrical. You'll also need something circular to trace. And this is what we're gonna do. Take that computer printout, could be any size. You just want the circle to be a little smaller than the J. And we're gonna cover the back of it in graphite. Make sure you do that on scrap paper. Tape it in your journal, then take your sharp pencil and just trace around it, transferring the J into your notebook. Then we take that circle trace, whatever it is, little bowl or a lid of something. I kinda had to do mine twice to, to get it centered in the page and over the J. And that is the setup for a really pretty cover page. Once you've got your circle and your J, then we begin to draw the jasmine. And our jasmine illustration, as usual, starts with a guide. I'm going to draw a bunch of little circles and ovals, and that shows me where those flowers are going to sit. So do some large circles and some smaller ones. The ovals I tend to use for little flowers that will be on a bit of an angle. And then once you've placed a bunch of circles and ovals, you begin to draw little leaves, kind of framing all the flowers and really filling out the illustration. You'll notice I let some of the leaves and flowers sit on top of the J and in other areas they kind of peek out from behind it and that's just at your discretion. And then to complete the guide, you'll put the center of each flower. I do little circles and you'll also draw some lines to show you where those petals are going to sit. And then once you've done that, you draw in the lines, you start placing all the petals. I have lots and lots of videos talking about how to set up a floral illustration, how to lay out and design, how to make it look like your flowers are on a bit of an angle. So I'm gonna link some of those videos as well because we do tend to move a little bit quickly in the plan with me because we're doing a cover page and a calendar and a weekly layout and all that good stuff. Uh, so I'm sketching in all my flowers. I started with that guide, then I do the pencil sketch, drawing in all those little petals and the jasmine is really just this simple five petal flower. And then once I'm happy with the sketch, then I go over everything in pen. And that's when you really see the jasmine begin to emerge because it kind of has this, the flower itself has this sort of pointed petal. Uh, it's typically the five petals. And, and so I'm doing a really simplified jasmine, but I do think it looks like jasmine. And at this point, I'm trying to make sure that I kind of give those petals a little bit of a point and uh, they look really pretty all clustered together with some of them being quite large and some being really tiny and gosh yeah I just think this illustration this cover page is a great one it it's like I'm gonna say it again my tacky phrase so much bang for your buck when you're tired and you don't have a lot of extra time maybe you've got a sick baby at home also <laughs> this is one of those cover pages that just looks so pretty and all you really need is to print the letter J and trace a circle and the whole rest of the illustration comes together really, really quickly and easily. The flowers just look so gorgeous, framed by all those tiny little leaves. And then here's one really nice thing. You don't have to trace a whole circle in pen because the leaves are popping off of that circle. You only have to do little sections of it, which helps a lot if you're worried about kind of not having a steady hand. 
All right, with your contour drawing complete, get rid of all the messy pencil sketchy bits and you can see what your illustration really looks like at this point and what it looks like is quite pretty. And then we're gonna take a larger fine liner. Today I'm working with the Mulatto Black Liners. Currently they're my favorite fine liners. Remember all my supplies are linked in the video description and I'm using the one millimeter nib to uh, fill in all that black negative space that sits behind the leaves and the flowers. I don't think I mentioned, but I did the contour drawing with the 07 nib. So I do tend to work with larger nibs, especially in my journal. I just like that weighty line for my Bujo, but use the pens that feel good to you. I tend to use like a large nib for me as the 07, and then the smaller nib for my shading would be like the 04. But you might start at the 04 and then drop down to an 01, uh, 1 1.1 millimeter nib when you do your line shading. If you do line shading at all, some of us just like a nice clean contour drawing. Am I rambling yet? Maybe a little, I'm a little tired. <laughs> Okay, I filled in that nice circle. The jasmine, it, this, this pretty bright white flower is just popping off my cover page. And now we're going to take our white Signo gel pen. This is my favorite gel pen. Remember, check my Amazon links if you wanna shop my favorite supplies. And we're just going to um, capture all of the little stems and branches that were kind of eaten up when we added the black background. So join all your little leaves and flowers together. You can add extra leaves at this point if you have a good white gel pen you really can't tell the difference between uh, what was left as page showing through and what is gel pen okay that looks so pretty and so intricate now what I want to do is add a little bit of line shading and the jasmine still kind of looks a little funny because we haven't added anything at the center of each flower and what I'm going to do to show the concave nature of the flower and to show that there would be that little kind of pucker of yellow there is just add some lines like a little crown or wheel of lines right at the center of the flower and that just helps to give it the look of the jasmine flower so simple and so pretty and the line shading really makes everything pop and the illustration looks extra intricate and detailed and that's it for the cover page illustration. I decided I do want to make mine into a Dutch door this month. I wasn't so sure. So I'm marking in eight squares. Then we put that page onto a cutting mat. You'll need a little knife and a ruler. And we just cut the straight sections first. You can see those are free now. And then I go around with my little paper knife and I just freehand the rest of it. You don't have to get super detailed. Like I tend to just kind of make a wavy line and hope that it looks good. And it usually does. We'll get rid of again, all of the uh, pencil marks, clean that up. And there is our Dutch door. I want to add a calendar to my cover page. I do think the calendar would look really pretty centered under the circular illustration, but I put mine on the page below. So you got a couple options, I think, this month. And then on that page below, I'm going to do what I always do. Maybe I should start switching things up. I don't know. Let me know. Are you guys getting bored? Or do you like that I kind of have a formula? I mean, it is really my journal. It's what I use. So I tend to kind of do what I like to do. But this is my goals and affirmations page. Page, which I title goals and focus and I tend to carry whatever illustration I've done on the cover onto this page below and that's exactly what you see me doing here I did like a really quick guide with a few circles and leaves and branches and I'm going to draw these two little like sprigs of the jasmine flower blooming on the branch with a couple leaves and then I just write goals and focus in the June plan with me last month, which the flower that month was Golden Wattle from Australia, I really appreciated all the kind words and comments. You guys were so supportive. I was just talking about purchasing our first home and kind of like unpacking and painting and how much creative energy that takes and how busy we are right now. And I just appreciate all the support and all the good ideas when it comes to painting and color choices. I love reading about that and just like reading your advice. <laughs> and I got me thinking, I really want to talk a little more, a lot more actually on the channel about mental health. Not that um, renovating has anything to do with mental health. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> I just went through this crazy season where we had to leave the apartment we were in and that sped up our whole house buying and wanting to buy a home process. And we found ourselves with a baby and moving cross country and quite stressed. 
But I did find myself coming back to my art as a way to ground myself and relax and unwind. And I think my journal really reflects that. It's not about making something perfect and making a pretty layout necessarily. It can really just be about finding a way to unwind at the end of the day and do something that's not screen-based. And for me, that has a huge impact on my mental health. And I think I just like to talk more on the channel about the role and the impact of creative time on our mental health. So let me know your feelings and thoughts on that. I would love to hear them. In the spirit of keeping things simple this month, I just did my little simple grid calendar and then I kind of traced a circle. It wasn't quite big enough, so I kind of just used my little washi tape as a guide, drew a circle on the opposite page, and then I'm filling it in using a sand colored brush pen. I do love a black and white theme, especially when I kind of have a time crunch. I'm so comfortable with black and white, but color is a great way to kind of get things done quickly and make it super cute. You basically color can be a little less intricate. Once I had those swashes and uh, circles of color, I took my paint marker. This is the Pen Touch from Sakura. And I added just some like very messy kind of four petal flowers, but that could be jasmine, right? Like that's jasmine. <laughs> just make it simple and it'll work. I promise you these were like blobs because the paint pen was a little old and oh man, we'll talk more about that later. I shouldn't have used it. I probably have moved it twice now. It's the same old paint pen that I've been using forever. I should have bought new supplies because you could see it kind of globbed out in some areas and then ugh, it like separated a bit and the oil in the paint actually soaked through the paper, which is for an archer and olive notebook, like nothing gets through this paper. It's so thick and so good for that. So I've never had that happen before. I just said we're going to talk about it later. I'm like going on and on about it right now. But anyways, my paint pen was old and it doesn't usually do that. So do beware, I guess, of the old older paint pen. I framed my white paint pen flowers with some little dark gray leaves and delicate stems. And then I took like a light gray and just added some lines down below because this section is just for important dates. So highlighting one row kind of like in a pattern there is a great way to create a list area. I'll write July 2022 over here. I'm going to put a little bit of gray up top there to tie everything together. And then we'll just put important dates of July as the header for this. And she is all done. I think this calendar page looks really great. And it came together in about 20 minutes, which is literally all the time I had. <laughs> oh, and I put some little black dots at the center of those flowers and they look really cute. We're going to finish up with a classic weekly layout that's just so simple to do. It's great when you just want to get things done, but you still want a little bit of pretty, but you really just want effective and you like don't have a ton of extra time. I've divided the page here into three sections on each side, and then I am coming in about seven or eight squares and putting a margin on the very left and the very right. From there, I use my little circle trace, which I've finally ordered, and we just place a little circle on all six sections. That's where we'll place the date. Use your pencil to write the day of the week across the top of each line or in the middle of each line there. This is such an easy layout and it always looks symmetrical and good. And that's really all you need to do. From there, you're going to go over everything with your fine liner. I'm using the 0.7 millimeter black liner for this. Just do your best at tracing those circles. Doesn't need to be perfection. And then once that layout is in place, you can have a little bit of fun and draw some flowers in those two margins. You can keep it really simple and just draw like one flower on each side. You could do like I'm doing and kind of make everything tiny. Sometimes I find that working tiny is actually easier, like just drawing small flowers and small leaves. It makes it look so intricate and pretty, but it's really, really achievable. Like it's actually easier to draw. Uh, but you could also do some stickers in the margins margins or just a swash of color with like a very simple illustration done in fine liner over top. So think easy and quick. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm coloring all the leaves in black, like literally just scribbling them in a little bit messy and then doing that little wheel of lines at the center of each tiny jasmine flower. We'll color in those circles. You'll use the white gel pen to uh, write in the date. And on the other side, I'm going to kind of echo the illustration illustration that I did on the left.
Like my shirt? You can get one for yourself. Check the merch shelf below this video. Finish up your layout by writing in the week that it is, you know, whatever, or give yourself a little calendar, get rid of all those pencil marks, clean it up. You can really see what you're working with now. If you want to add more line shading, you can, and that's it. Let's do a quick flip through. We did this graphic black and white cover page. We have our goals and focus underneath. You can see the grease stain that happened because of my stupid old paint pen. Uh, but then we have our calendar page, little pop of color there. And finally, a simple classic weekly layout that I always go back to. I am a little bit sick by that grease stain, especially since this is my brand new notebook, but I mean, I'll be okay. Guys, remember patrons of the channel can print my cover page. You can get all the bonus content over on Patreon. It's uh, only $2 a month or $22 for the year. You get a month for free when you sign up for 12 months. Thanks for watching friends. Thanks for supporting the channel. If you are a patron, I will see you soon with a new tutorial.